Now let's talk about the product. What is EDA? EDA kind of tops up our data center portfolio offering. We have been doing data centers for a good number of years now. We have the hardware lineup that you might be or might not be aware of. We have the full lineup of leaf and spine switches that is based on uh, merchant silicon. And on top of these switches, we run our flagship, or you can call it flagship, a network operating system, Astro Linux, that was purposely built for the data center use cases in mind, for the network automation in mind, for extensibility and reliability. What we did not have for quite a while is the management system that can be on par with all the breakthroughs that we've made on the hardware and network operating system level. That is why EDA, or Event Driven Automation, was necessary to be built. And uh, we released it a year ago, I would say, for GA. And this will be the focus of it, right? We will not focus on the hardware. We will not talk about the SRO Linux or SRS here. We will specifically focus ourselves on the network management system and how we can use that for network automation specifically. Now, what is non-key event-driven automation? This is a quote that we had uh, the marketing launch of the product. I will read it out loud. So Nokia either raises the bar on data center network operations with a modern approach that builds on Kubernetes to bring highly reliable, simplified, and adaptable lifecycle management to data center networks. Very marketing, right? This kind of, you can basically just say Nokia either equals the best, and that will be the same. The meaning will not be lost on that one. What I will do, I will try to take this paragraph and slice it into chunks and we will dive into the concepts of EDA. Each of them contributed to this big, massive marketing sentence. So we will start with the first part that says Nokia EDA is built on Kubernetes. Why do you think this is important to highlight? Or maybe why is this relevant to us? So there are multiple reasons why you think Kubernetes might be something that you want to think in the back of your head or like keep keep in mind. What we kind of take from it is, of course, the platform itself. Now, if you take modern software applications, they tend to be delivered now on cloud platforms, on-prem or off-prem, and most of the times they use Kubernetes as a platform to run them which means that we can leverage the same platform for delivering our application and be in constant sync or not alienated to the application delivery teams. We can use the same platforms to deploy applications and network automation solutions. We can go cloud, on-prem, off-cloud, edge locations, just based on the fact that we can be deployed on a platform that is ubiquitous and engineers know how to use it. If it would be just you know, a VM that you need to spin up on the hypervisor, we'll now be switching from VMware to Nutanix or something like this. With Kubernetes, there is a guarantee that we can go with the flow and uh, be, be on the same terms with other IT teams. We also bring the Kubernetes concepts to EDA, which is even more important than just the, you know, the installation platform. What it means is that we can leverage the same Kubernetes resource model. And don't be afraid if these terms feel, uh, you, you, know, you don't know them or you think that they are uh, quite hard. They're, they're not. What Kubernetes resource model brings in to us is the declarative abstractions, the mechanism that we will use to define our entities in EDA in the way that you define a pod or a service in Kubernetes. It's basically, again, to stay in line with IT world that has been using this concept for quite a while, and we don't want to reinvent the wheel and use something else. We want to make sure that we use the same paradigm, same concept, and at the same time, it enables us to do quite interesting things that, of course, I will show you. Now, as I said, we with EDA, we kind of try to continue the role that we did with open source initiatives outside of Nokia and be as open as possible, try to use as less licenses as possible and make sure that you can play with the tools that otherwise would be on, under the registration or uh, yeah, identification wall. 
That is why we have the, the tri EDA concept. The tri EDA concept is basically a full blown EDA installation that you can install anywhere you are. You don't need a license, you don't need to call us, you don't need to register. You just go to the, repo to the repository uh, and download the repository or clone the repository and use make try either command to spin up the full environment. We want you to play with it uh, without any limitations. That is why with EDA Playground, you can deploy the EDA system and it will come with a virtual network on the side. So it's not, we'll not ask you to call us to get us Linux images, right? It will be part of the playground. So you will be able to use all of the animations that I will show you today and you will be able to run them whenever you are. You can run it on your laptop, you can run it on a Linux machine. We'll have to use it for this demo as well. So I will deploy this system right now in the, on the next slide to show you how easy it is to actually deploy the system so you can play with it, right? We also have the either the dev website, which hosts our documentation. So it's not under documentation.nokia.com. We do have a part that sits there as well. On either.dev, we have the hands-on documentation. That is something that allows you to have more workflow-oriented, engineer-oriented docs with step-by-step -step instructions, how to achieve something instead of listing every single API parameter, right? So on either the dev, very easy to remember the domain. You can find a lot of information about the product, how to use it, and especially how to install this try the experience. You'll be able to use that as well. I will actually deploy this right now, right? So I will go to my terminal. Okay, so now I cloned my playground repository, right? You see it here, I am in my Nokia Ida slash playground. You can clone it as well. It's a public repository. You don't need to be part of the, uh, the, the org or something like this. And I will just try, type make try EDA. This is all you need to do. So the installation will start and we will start installing the system. As I said, the system is based on Kubernetes. What it will actually do in your case when you do the make try EDA, it will deploy a small Kubernetes cluster on your machine and it will install EDA components on Kubernetes. So we'll have a lot of pods, a lot of deployments, a couple of services. It's all going to be part of your installation. So while it installs, it will take us 10 something minutes to pull the images, install it on this fresh system. Uh, while it does that, now I can pull this off. So while it does that, I wanted to show you what actually happens when we install the thing, right? This is what you get. This is the ar architecture of the system. There is a lot of components. And the reason is that the system is based on microservices, the modern architectural principles. We split it all down. There's a lot of small pieces, each re uh, responsible for a particular thing. You see that there is a config engine in the center of this screen with lots of arrows coming in. This is the brain of the system. It does a lot of computation stuff for transactions, for configuration management, all that good stuff. We have the EDA store to install applications and extend your system with it. There is, of course, the identity management system, so you can have users, SSO capabilities, things like that. On the bottom, you see there is a node put full component, a component that talks to the nodes with different southbound interfaces and provisions the configuration to the nodes and get the state out of, it, out of them. You might have noticed there is a Git component on the left-hand side of the slide. This is the only database that we use. We, we use Git for storing the, the inputs to the system, and it will actually enable us to have some really interesting capabilities when it comes to restore backups and things like that. We have also on the right-hand side, you see there is a component called mystically CApps. What CX means is, means actually nothing. There is no explanation on the term. It was an engineering name and nobody knows why it's called CX. But what it does, it is the digital twin of EDA. You can deploy a lot of nodes with CX. It will be part of the solution because the solution is based on Kubernetes. It can scale horizontally by default, which means that if your cluster is big enough, horizontally scalable, you can deploy your full replica of your data center network. Doesn't matter how many nodes it has, 
100, fine, 500, fine as well. If your Kubernetes cluster can cope with the load, CX will be able to deploy this topology for you so you can do the CI CD pipelining and checks on the real deal. So that is quite nice, right? We have the API server. It, of course, takes in your API requests and then there's the workflow engine to support workflows like upgrades, things, like quite important things for testing, for example. But it looks so nice, so it's not too busy, right? What it actually gives you in, in terms of the components is the EDA with a bunch of applications. You see there, I call out a few interfaces, fabric application, services application. You don't even know what it is because we will talk about them uh, in a moment. But you also have the CX digital twin on the side. So the solution is full. It doesn't just give you the management layer and nothing else. The goal of the kind of the playground is to make sure that you can actually start working with it. That is why you have the digital twin with three nodes in it. You will have two leaves, one spine, you can play with it. They are all, of course, Astro Linux based, but there is a multi-vendor component to it as well. It will soon be. So you, how you will interact with that, you have your either cluster, it's currently deploying on my machine, and then you have the API client or UI. This is you, this is us. We will talk to Ida through REST API, and Ida will talk with GNMI to the nodes. So we have these two leaves and spines. For SRO Linux, we use GNMI. For streaming telemetry, commit confirm capabilities, all that good stuff that this protocol enables us to use. Now, remember I said that the system is based on Kubernetes. It was not just a gimmick. If you have uh, kubectl or canines or any other tool that shows you the components in your cluster, you will see that there is a lot of things like there is, I think I'm listing deployments here. So there's like 20 deployments in the EDA system namespace. Each component does its own thing. So this is all microservice based, uh, easy to onboard this, this system to any Kubernetes cluster. Like if you have a GKE or AWS something, uh, you can deploy it there and you will be able to install EDA on any Kubernetes cluster that your hands can reach. 